What's good, bro? Do you want to just introduce yourself and let's just get straight into it? No problem, no problem. So obviously, I go by mid-range. My name is Joseph. But um, I basically run a relationship podcast. And what we talk about is just like life, you know, wellness, how, you know, certain attributes of character can influence you in a relationship. So it's all about just being more self-aware and just asking the hard questions like, you know, does doubt affect you in relationship? Exactly. Things of these nature. And um, just getting industry professionals to talk on the topic because I know me, I only have like a limited range of knowledge. So getting different perspective, different voices, it's just creating the kind of environment where we can speak about these issues so people can make better decisions moving forward. So yeah, that's what I do. I've got a podcast called Midrange Gist. You can follow me on Instagram, Twitter, Clubhouse at midrange underscore J-O. So yeah, if you want good content, good philosophical content and stuff, hit up my page, like my content, send me um, any questions you have and I'll answer them. Yeah, that's good. That's cool. That's cool. I'll make sure I'll put it in, like, everything. Um, You said something, actually, about self-awareness, and that's literally just what I wanted to ask you about how do you think self-awareness comes into play, like, in relationships? Like, how important do you think it is? Self-awareness is super important, and I feel like a lot of the time we feel like we can just go through the motions. Mm -hmm. And so I think a key thing that people should do is that they should start to observe what they're doing they have to spend time observing what they're doing and i would say the best approach, it sounds dumb it sounds stupid but just sitting down and recording what you did the day before or the day two two weeks ago or something like that like if i was to ask you right now like do you remember what you did last thursday detail in detail oh, you probably nah, would say no but if you not. did a journal you would know what you did yeah you know what i'm saying yeah, you did a journal. I, that's, that's one. That's what some guy said to me yesterday. Mm. So it's like, you obviously there's only so much that your mind can remember, but at the same time, if you create a journal, it's like an it's a, like an external hard drive of your memory. And so I'd say where it pertains to like a relationship is the fact that sometimes we don't realize what, how our be our behavior is affecting other people. It's only mm. when we take time to stop and get that kind of third perspective, like seeing how we feel outside of how we feel and reading it we're like damn i'm a bit toxic or damn i'm a bit inconsiderate i don't have empathy so i'd say a big one is journaling if you're somebody that doesn't like journaling too much i I usually journal five days a week and then i take the weekend off so Mm. just journal like and if you're thinking of ideas of stuff to talk about for your journal you can talk about the good things that happened in your day the things that pissed you off or the things that made you angry and then you just finish with like a, what you're thankful for. And then you usually end up seeing that there's so many good things that happen in your day. But as it pertains to relationships, it's definitely finding them bad things about yourself because those bad characteristics of yourself are going to show up when you get in a relationship. Mm-hmm. So maybe you're not in a relationship. Maybe you, 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 you can't take advice or maybe you're prideful or maybe you're wrong and strong. These yeah. things are serious problems that happen with just general single people but they are problems that will persist in relationships mm. because that's where you're, you're going to be with that person all the time. They're going to see all sides of you. So yeah, I feel like, to work. sorry to cut that's you off. Now, I was going to say, I literally like what you're saying. I feel like I haven't been in a relationship myself in it, but for my point of view, I feel like once you're in a relationship, because you, you're becoming so close with them um, and it's a different relationship to what you would have with your family members and your friends, that things are a lot more um because you you go for you go through more with them do you know what i mean so like you get all sides of each other like your friends don't necessarily get all sides of you your family you don't get all sides of you and they learn to deal with you different and you learn how to interact with them different but like if you're selfish for example you can sort of get away with it sometimes in friendships and like between your family but in a relationship you probably can't get away with that do you know what I mean? And so imagine if now you had kids. Yeah. How are you going to be mess. selfish? Imagine then? kids. You, 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 that's, mm. it's, it's unrealistic. And I'd say that, like, another thing that I see that I think people ought to ought to realise is that, like, you need to, like, always put yourself in the other person's shoes. Like, maybe consider, is what I'm saying and how I'm saying it affecting the person that I'm speaking to? Do you see what I'm saying? So, like, I am... Um, 
I say this a lot and it's because I'm reading a book and I say women love and men want respect. So if a woman feels like a man is not being loving towards her, then she's going to act in a disrespectful way because she doesn't feel loved. No woman will, no woman, no woman will respect a man that doesn't show her love. And similarly, a guy wants a woman to respect her. So a guy wouldn't love no woman that doesn't respect him. So it's all about having, it's all about doing that selfless act. So when you're talking about selfishness, if you're not ready to do what the other person wants, then you're not ready to be in a relationship. You, you, mm. There has to be that selfless act. And I say this to men in particular, because men want to be leaders. They want to be the guys that, you know, control the relationship. Mm. But when you think of leaders, they're the people that put everyone ahead of them. Yeah, and so like it's a like proper leader, when they put themselves last. Yes, mm. put themselves last. So if, you, if you're the person that's saying you're a leader, you need to, you have to bear the grunt or mm. it, whatever you want to call it, whether it's you're stressful, this, this, and that. That's what you, you that's what you signed up for. You said you're, you're a leader. Sacrifices. So like you have to hold you gotta make mm. the sacrifice, you gotta hold it. You can't start complaining. I mean, yeah. it's not gonna be easy, cool. <laughs> but you wanna hold that medal of honor like you're a leader. Mm. So you know, you have to it, it's just part of the job, it's like part of the work that it requires. So I say knowing who you are, what's your responsibilities, a bit like when we play basketball and stuff, people mm. know their positions, so they know what they're supposed to do. So if you're going to say you're a leader, you're going to lead your family, you have to do or lead your partner or be a leader in your relationship. You have to know what they need. Can you provide that? And if you can't, then work on either getting the skills to learn how to provide that mm. or, you know, let them let the next man take it, man. Let the, mm. <laughs> let the next I think that's man when that self-awareness it. comes that's because it. sometimes I feel like yes. they don't, people won't know what they can provide and what they're good at providing and what they're good at and what they're not good at and sometimes why they may be reluctant to do certain things do you know what I mean like if someone's been cheated on before uh if a man's been cheated on before they've been hurt or whatever then it's like they may be reluctant to love and be vulnerable like we get that I imagine you probably see situations like that a lot where men the sorry men are struggling to be vulnerable because they've been hurt before and then the woman doesn't feel that love do you know what I mean and then that's when the thing happens, but they don't, yeah. the man won't realize that he's holding on to the past situation. They just think that, oh yeah, no, nah, this is how I mm. am. And they're thinking that it's a good thing, but it's mm. doing way more harm than good. But like, they're trying to protect themselves, but they don't even realize it. Yes. 100%. Literally. And that's why yes. I think. I'm one of them. I was... What was you say? But the thing is, it's just honest. It's just yeah. honesty. Like, that's my, my girlfriend I told her that like I, like so pri- pr- prior to that I dealt with a few girls and I had a girlfriend before that and it and obviously the same thing happened she was talking to another guy mm. and she told me and I was like raw like I'm this guy that's doing all this and if you feel me and that mm. happened you feel me so I was mad you get mm. me after that relationship stone cold mode do you understand mm. like Nobody could get through to them in a me. Like, yeah. you might feel my vibe, you know, if you spend too much time around me and catch a vibe. But I'm not cuffing you. I'm, I'm, I'm not, <laughs> not getting no relationship. It's not happening. It's not happening. Yeah. So <clears throat> I thought, you know, I was I was that guy now. Like, <laughs> yeah, I got hurt in the past, but now I'm on attack mode. So no mm. one's going to hurt me, you feel what I'm saying? And all that's going to happen is I'm going to enjoy myself. We're going to do vibes but you're not going to get, I'm not going to let you get to that point where you can hurt my feelings. It's not happening. Mm. And so then when I met my girlfriend, I think, I think it gets to a point where you start to think, damn, like, look how much damage I'm doing. Like, look how many people's feelings I'm hurting. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm. I, I, I like your, your honest self comes out. Like if you're a good person, you'll be like, I can't keep doing this. Like, it's not fun. You know what I'm saying? Like maybe at first it was fun of combat, that feeling, that anger that was inside of you after a while it wears off you know and you're just like what are you doing so i guess when i met my girlfriend i still told that like one of my biggest biggest problems is that like i'm scared if i do if i do go the full way and i open up to you properly mm. you might just go and do a madness and if you do yeah. a madness it's, that's gonna make me that's gonna make me not want to do something like this again ever again but then yeah. when i said it to her she kind of she looked at me like are you dumb like why would i even do that <laughs> And so mm. I guess 
a lot of women said to me it was good that I told her. Do you see what I'm yeah. saying? That like she at least she had like some clarity. That's that so sometimes I think yeah. guys should just yeah. It's not about being perfect, it's just like have the discussion, you know what I'm saying? Have the conversation. Mm. And like now it's like almost two years later and everything's been fine, you know. So I guess it's just that honesty, having that discourse, uh, being able to just speak on certain topics that are kind of like, that's literally holding you back. But I guess I also did journaling. So yeah. I was able to understand that's this what, is why I do. And then when you look back at it, it was like, oh, this is why I act like this. For me, yeah. when I like, I'm not going to say, how do I say this? How, when I'm like reflecting on myself, right? Uh, like, I don't know what the correct terminology is. For me, it's more of like, I do like a meditation and I'll be like, mm-hmm. oh, I'm actually like this. And then I'll mm-hmm. write it down for me in it rather mm-hmm. than like writing about what's happened. It's more of a, mm-hmm. I will think through it all in my head and I'll say, oh, I reacted mm-hmm. like this because I like, I'm like mm-hmm. this sometimes or like um, I did this because blah, blah, blah. Do you know what I mean? And then stuff like that. And then for me, that's how my self-awareness comes out through more meditating on my actions and my situations that I've been in, Mm -hmm. how I've reacted and why Mm -hmm. I reacted like that. And then I journal it down. And literally in my journal, I was flicking through it the other day and I looked at it because I write like my things at like the back of it. I was like, wow, Mm -hmm. like I've actually done like quite a lot. Do you know what I mean? Because you just do it bit by bit by bit. And then my problem Mm -hmm. is that I do it and then I forget that it's there. So then sometimes I forget, like Mm -hmm. I lose track of my self-awareness sometimes. I don't know if that makes sense, Mm -hmm. but. Uh, What do you mean by that? Like when I, so there are times where I'm self-aware means you know what, you know why you're doing what you're doing and like you know yourself Mm -hmm. in a way, right? Mm -hmm. So there's been times I forget my bad habits, shall I say, um, and why Mm -hmm. those come out which means I give mm. it room to start coming back out again and start yeah, resurfacing yeah. because mm. I forget that it's a bad habit and all of those things. And then I do more self-reflection and I'm like, oh, wait, but I already knew this. So then why have I gone away from the things that were like working? Do you know what I mean? Like, because obviously I'm not trying to be toxic. I'm not trying to, yeah. do you know what I mean? So that's just something mm. I myself. It's, it's, like, it's crazy though. Mm. Yeah. I think you have to you have to also remember that how do I say like being being confident on a basketball court and being confident in life or being confident at the job place is different it's different mutations of it do you see what I'm saying Mm. so if I was to be or if I was to be like um have like a toxic personality if what toxic looks like in basketball and what it looks like in the workplace Mm. is two it's the same thing but it's two different types. You know what I'm saying? It's a different type of form. So even though you might say, oh, you know, like, oh, like I'm toxic. It might not be the same kind of toxic that mm. was in one that was in the other. So it's like, maybe it's, I don't know. I would look at it if I was in that same situation. I guess I'd look at it like, oh, this is another way I'm toxic. Or, yeah, oh, yeah, this yeah. Is, like This might be a mu- mutation of it. Because I feel like, I don't know, like if it was the same exact scenario, and and that happened then that's cool you know what i'm saying i'm toxic i forgot about it but mm. if it was like something that like it was a different type or different form or i had a different encounter mm. then it's kind of like a different scenario that you haven't yeah haven't been i aware think of. sometimes it comes down to understanding the like the underlying thing do you know what i mean yes, like yes. if you if you're a confrontational person so yeah. and you can say oh i don't get along with my teammates but then you start mm-hmm. to realize, oh wait, you're you're confrontational in a bad way. And once again, being confrontational isn't always bad, but sometimes it is. Yeah. When it starts to become yeah. very pushy, pushy, do you know what I mean? So if it's like in sport now, for example, where your teammates are just saying, Oh, yo, you could have done this better, oh, I was open and you didn't see me. And then you start mm-hmm. arguing, you start confronting them, or your coach starts mm-hmm. saying thing and you're confronting them, mm-hmm. and then you could it might not be that, oh, it's just basketball. It might be, like I yeah. said, you're confrontational. So now that might come out where your partner is now saying, oh, um, how come, can you do the, like, oh, you never do the dishes or, you know, you don't call me or you don't, whatever. And then you start arguing, like the underlying issue is that you're confrontational yeah. sometimes and stuff like that. Um, okay, okay. But yeah, yeah no, it's, it's interesting. And it's interesting. Mm. The next thing I was going to say, 
um yeah. in terms of like relationships and everything do you think you it's important to work on yourself before and like yeah. be self-aware before you get into it because I know like you were saying you you were journaling before you got into your current relationship and then because of your journaling you're able to communicate those issues out with your current partner I say a bit of both because you know I'm not going to tell a 15 year old boy to pick up a journal and start reading, <laughs> like start trying to do self-reflection because mm. like maybe it's not his, his concern you know maybe yeah. he's just trying to enjoy his life but he is talking to girls or he might be talking to girls on some like you know just platonic like this my girlfriend like yeah. huggy huggy like yeah. I buy you sweets on Valentine's Day and stuff like mm. that so in a way like people engage in like you know romance and stuff of that nature before they even get a chance to look at the world and on a deep philosophical level so um i'd say it's hard to it's hard i think it's hard to reflect when there's nothing you've got no material to reflect upon mm. so if you haven't been in like a relationship or you ain't did anything in a relationship like you could be journaling and stuff like that but you need some kind of source material. Like you said, basketball, that's yeah. source material. Like relationship, that's source material. Or friends, that's source material. Mm. But if you don't have any of that, and and it's like you can't start until you can't start until after you've yeah. gone through something. Yeah. To then now say, you know, this is how I'm gonna make predictions. It's like in, in, in life, like <laughs> you have mathematicians and all of these people mm. doing forecasting and all of this stuff. And they can't predict what's going to happen in the future or change or make an, any kind of prediction of the future without any kind of past material. Yeah. So it's, like, it's the same thing. So I'd say in terms of like, do you need to work yourself before a relationship? I think you need to work in between. So it's like you need a bit of past experience to kind of mm. work off of to understand, you know, what, what your triggers are and, you know, yeah. what you, you know, what it is. But then after that, you can start to get the, you can start to now make changes going forward. So you might, let's say if I, if I wasn't in a relationship, I mean, cause I think this one's going to go to the end, but if I wasn't in a relationship I was in and I maybe was in, oh, I don't even want to use this example, but let's say I was in a situation. Yeah. Mm. That's still an opportunity to learn about how you are as a person, what mm. triggers you, what, what are you like, what is it about you? Like, when somebody confronts you about something, why is it that it's, it's upsetting you? Do you know what yeah. I'm saying? Like, if a girl says, oh, you don't show me enough attention, but you're in a situation ship, maybe you're getting angry because you've presented it in a way that it seems like what she's asking for, you was giving it to her before, mm. and then now you don't want to give it to her, but, but now you're trying to run the situa- situation ship game on her or something like that. Mm. So it's, it's, there's a lot to like, you, you. I don't think... In my honest opinion, I don't think you can learn everything you need to learn about a relationship, being mm. in a relationship sometimes. Sometimes it might be the dating scene, you know, dating a few mm. people, you know, that you get understanding. Like, you have to learn from the situation that didn't work too. Like, the situation that didn't get to make it that stage. The ones where you just went on a date with a girl and she didn't reply back. Like, there's a lot to learn from that. Why didn't she reply back? Mm. But if you're the somebody that just goes through the moments. Yeah, learn from your failures, but you need material, so mm. work a bit, I guess. Yeah, you need to prepare a bit, but you, yeah, yeah. That's so, do you think bit. like people should have their life together, like in general, before they get in? Because I know there was one point when I was younger, I was like, Yo, there's no point in me getting a relationship, I'm just trying to get my life together, you know, focus and do me, work on myself, blah 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 blah. And it's like, yeah. Does it even matter? Do you not obviously, yeah, it's good to get yourself together, but can you ever even have yourself together in the first place? Do you know what I mean? Like there's yeah, yeah. like I know plenty of men that are like, oh, you know, I'm trying to get my life together. And then when I get my life together, that's when I'm gonna settle yeah. down. That's when I'm gonna, you know, start dating and find my wife and blah, 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 blah. Mm. But it's like, is that really the case though? Or are you just like going about it the wrong way or you're just not ready for a relationship and you're just using this as an excuse just to like just be flirting and not like commit to anything what do you think yeah i think it's a bit of both i'd say most guys that get a heartbroken they're on that <laughs> line like they're just not emotionally available they, like they don't they can't mm. trust nobody like it's real talk they can't mm. so they'd rather go for a situation because then 
we both know what it is. It's not going nowhere far. You can't have feelings because I already know that it's going to end. Like, I already know that this is temporary. So we both know what it is. There's no one blindsiding whoever. You know, all of them cheating scam, you can't run that on me. Because if you talk to another guy, I already knew, we already had agreements that that was going to happen. Mm. And we're not like, you know, and it's not. And I do know guys that are in situationships that get mad at other guys for talking to the same girl, even though they're not in a relationship. <laughs> so there is yeah. that con- con- complex. Yeah. I do think that um, going back to what you said about, do you feel like um, you have to be fully prepared before you get into a relationship? I'd like to believe that you would be like 90% and then mm. you, you take that 10% leap of faith. Like there's nothing you can do in life that I think you can do with 100% confidence. There's always going to be that unsureness about anything you do in life. But if you get to a level whereby the person you're not a burden on somebody that's what i like to say you're not mm. a burden on somebody so if for instance you made um 60k a year or 50k a year but then your partner made 40 or 50k a year you two can't be a burden on each other you both are making the same amount of money like you're mm. in the same bracket you know so mm. it's about that it's like i don't want to i wouldn't want my problems to burden you to the extent that it's mm. almost like you can't live your life properly so hmm. if and, for instance go ahead no i was going to say just to be clear though like there's other type of burdens right like emotional burden in people as well yeah. for example exactly yeah yes yes, yes. Add that's on, a ter- yeah. that, it's not a terrible one but people do have it in it mm. and so it's like it can manifest itself in in, in the forms of like anxiety you know when mm. people have like anxiety they need certain people around them because they give them that sense of wholeness but mm. then it's like you need to be able to be whole on your own you know yeah. i kind of compare it to like it's like if you have like a wound on your leg, you need to at least let the wound like close and stop bleeding before you can at least, you know, start walking or doing any exercise. If you get like an injury, it has to, like, you, it's almost, I see it like this. If you was to tear your ACL or tear um, yeah. a, your ACL, at what point can you start playing basketball again? Mm. That's the exact same way I see it with, <laughs> with like relationships. You need to get to a point where you can, where you can at least, compete again without that issue mm. being a problem and like you know you're good regardless and then it's yes, like cool yes, if yes. i get hurt again then i get hurt again but it's not you know on top of the same injury and it's not gonna like yeah. take me out for good because yeah like I'm but there's also that gray area mm. there's also that gray area because yes you can work on yourself but you also need to understand that people go back and forth Mm. See, so something could be confident and then something could happen and it could really shift them back into anxiety yeah. even though you met them confidently and it, it's, it's just shifts that people not no human is just like like one way like things yeah. go back and forth different life act, yeah. like things happen so i think for a relationship as well you need to find somebody who's who wants to do life with you like who wants mm. to work through your ups and downs so they understand when you're when you're good you're like when things are good that's great but then also there's times when you know you might be down you know so it's under, it's having somebody who's willing to stick with you regardless yeah. if you get somebody like that that's where it's real so then that's the problem because it's like yeah you can have issues and not be perfect but if you have somebody that's willing to stick with you the whole way then you really you, you do need to work on yourself but you have some you have a safety net in a way yeah you have like a good safety net yeah, so, you, like you said, like cause one thing I've been learning lately um, is that like growth isn't linear, as in like it's, it's not like yeah. always up. Do you know what I mean? Like yeah. it's gonna be yeah. like that, and eventually it'll yeah. be overall, it will yeah. improve. So you need someone that's gonna mm-hmm. stick around through the dirts and like the highs and the lows, like mm-hmm. you were saying, isn't it? Hundred percent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So do you think? there are things you can only learn in a relationship 100 percent. like what i'd say i'd say um what's some things that you can you know it's i i was gonna say you, you can learn how to have like proper sex in a relationship <laughs> but you can do outside of a relationship too you know what i'm saying <laughs> that's a fact that's why it's 100 percent straight away but yeah <laughs> but but i think in a relationship you can you can learn how to work through problems 
Mm. That's the only place where you can learn to. Because when you're in a situation with somebody, if anybody gives you stress, you can just leave. Yeah, like, you're not my girl. Like, oh, I'm out. You're, you can't give me that stress. You're not. You don't have the. <laughs> you don't have the credentials. You know? mm. And I think women should take the same stance too. Like, if we're not in a relationship and you're trying to do up stress and pass on me, well, I'm out. You know, you're not my boyfriend. Yeah. I'm not doing like this is not this is not no teamwork. Like we're not trying to build together or anything. Mm. You're not gonna make your problem my problem because you're not my boyfriend. Yeah. Likewise, likewise, the females, you're not my girlfriend. Like, yeah, we're cool on that. You know what I'm saying? But then if if it's getting to that stage, you have to really evaluate what is this like? Are we mm. really in a relationship? You know, because now there's blurred lines. Mm. And like, and as so I say, so situationships are peak. So, you know. But I'd say that's the biggest thing. Like in relationships, you learn to work through problems. Like things may not always go your way. You may you have to understand somebody. You have to have patience. You have to have like, like I, me, I don't argue. But mm. I guess everybody keeps saying to me, oh, watch where you're moving with your girlfriend. You guys are going <laughs> to argue. I was like, listen, I mm. don't argue. I don't argue with anybody. Like mm. I, there's only, like there's a few guys I argue with, but that's it. Women I don't usually argue with. They're usually like very understanding, you know? Mm. And so for, for me, I'm just like, that's it. I don't, I don't see it happening. But if it does happen, it would be interesting to so see. So when you say you don't argue, what do you mean? Like you have a, a very calm discussion or like you just... Yeah, yeah. Because oh, okay. I'm like, I'm, mm. I'm, I'm a midway between like an introvert and an extrovert. I did a test. And yeah. so it's like, I'd say introverts, like if they get into a confrontation, they're going to think about it. Then they'll mm. come back to they, 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 no introverts will think about it and come up with like yeah. 10 solutions mm. and they probably will never become value. you. But then mm. an extrovert is that like, I want to deal with that problem now, you know. Mm. Like if there's an issue now, let's deal with it now, get out of our mm. spirits, and then we can move forward. Yeah. So for an introvert, they don't like that because they have they haven't had time to think. But yeah. then an extrovert that's me, doesn't so. like an introvert. Yeah. Yeah, that's me. <laughs> I'm an introvert. I'm an introvert. Don't like, like I'm an introvert yeah. as well. I'll think it through, Extroverts. and then it's like, yeah. cool. Let's let's attack this now, and this is the best way to like deal with it. Yeah, that's the way I yeah. like thing, and then the extroverts doesn't like the introverts because they don't want to talk when they when they're ready to talk, which is now. <laughs> and so yeah. then th- that's where the problem yeah. comes, mm. you know. And then people in the middle that can do both, and so yeah. they said they said to me that I'm somewhere in the middle. So it's mm. like sometimes I want to talk about it straight away. Sometimes I just want to talk about it in a bit. I need time to go and process it. And so what I usually do is that, like, if they say something, if, if like, you know, I'm with my girlfriend, she says something to me that um, I, I guess may, might offend me. I, I think to myself straight away, why did she say that? Mm. Let me look at things from her perspective first. Like, why did she say that? Once I do that, it, it just takes my focus away from how I feel. Which mm. is gonna, which is gonna make me say something that might start an argument. So yeah. I'd be like, "Why did she say that?" So I'd be like, "Then I'm gonna come back to her after I thought about it mm. and come back to her. now we're having a discussion." Yeah. So that's how I, and that's how I've generally be with all women, all people in general. Mm, just in and general. So then yeah. I really, yeah, I really never get, in, I really ever get into an argument. Mm. But I think if I'm living in a house, <laughs> I rather <laughs> sleep in the same bed. You know, I'm not gonna be able to. I'm not gonna be able to do the whole. I'll come chat to you in a bit. This is a we have to go to bed. The way come chat to me later, yeah. bro. We live in the same house. We live in the same house. Yeah, you know uh, yeah. But like, I think it's yeah. good for everybody to always have that balance between the two. Do you know what I mean? Because you can't always just say, "Oh yeah, I'm gonna get back to you later," in it. But then you can't always be so impulsive yeah. as well and just start applying straight away and not even thinking about it and applying out of emotion especially so it is definitely yeah. always good to have that balance and I keep on yeah. saying this but like one thing I have literally just been learning lately in life is pretty much always about balance whatever that balance looks like because it might not be 50-50 yeah. but it's still mm-hmm. a balance between the two mm-hmm. do you know what I mean um, I think so yeah, it, one thing talks about, I think it's Aristotle talks about it's the golden mean it's okay. a good concept it's like uh, between two vices, there's always a middle ground and that's always the best place to take. So like, yeah. if you have like confidence and fear, mm. there's something in the middle, you know, that's kind of like good. But it's, it's, it's like that in life in general, there's always that golden rule. Yeah, that yeah. makes sense. What are you going to say though? I was going to say another thing I feel like you can learn in a relationship with like in the interdependence and like teamwork. 
but like for mm-hmm. teamwork, it's like how to work with people because in mm-hmm. a sport like even if it's a team sport you can be on the same team with people and you're not necessarily mm-hmm. working together, together you know what i mean like yes. some of you some people are but some people are still working mm-hmm. for their best interest yeah. trying where, to get like, highlights yeah do you know what i mean yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they're working for their best interest and they're trying to get make sure they get their rebounds their blocks their points or whatever it is etc but it's like mm-hmm. in a relationship i would imagine it's like you're not competing with anybody other than your like do you know what i mean your own yeah. like toxic side do you know what i mean so you're basically working together and your only angle is mm-hmm. to make it work mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. there's not there's no other reason for you to be selfish really and truly if you're working together so that also teaches you like we said earlier like to sacrifice and that like, compromise as well now that i'm thinking about mm-hmm. it because if you're not willing to compromise then i imagine yeah. it won't work you know what i mean yeah yeah i think i think this really ties into the idea of like that love and respect that i was talking about that, yeah. like women women definitely like i always say this in it for any stable like they usually say that like um arguments start because of that in, okay. in any argument that you see in a relationship like it's either the woman doesn't feel loved or the guy doesn't feel respected and mm. it always comes in, in different types of forms like i think they both mean the same thing kind of but it's like for men it's like if let's say for instance um like you said earlier like if somebody cheats so if a woman cheats on a man he feels like he like he feels disrespected mm. that like you know as a man he's the man of house you went ahead and did that and mm. i did all of this for you and so it's like it's more of like you disrespected me on a principle level yeah not Whereas that you don't when, love me yeah not that you don't love me you see yeah. what i'm saying but then when <laughs> when a guy cheats mm. the woman genuinely thinks you don't love me because mm. you had all of this hair but you still go out and get something else but th- yeah. that's why i say love is the most important drive to a woman and respect is the most important thing to a man. So mm. if if any time the uh, uh, um uh one doesn't feel like a woman doesn't feel loved or a guy doesn't feel respected, there's an argument. And mm. so then you know there's this notion that's going around that should women submit to men? Oh like, yeah, yeah. I don't. I think I think the word submit is the wrong word to use because it it <laughs> just makes it seem like a woman is less than. But yeah. if I say I respect you. If mm. I say I respect you, it doesn't mean I'm lower than you. It just means I respect you and mm. I respect you for what you stand for. Mm. So I think that that's what men are asking for. Like, just mm. respect me on the level that, like, you 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 like, you wouldn't you wouldn't do wrong against me. But I'm not trying to say you're below me. Because yeah, I respect you back too. Mm. But the um, way I even I see think... that. Oh, now finish, go on. Oh uh, no, I was gonna say I can't remember. What I was gonna say, go ahead. <laughs> uh, I was gonna say like might sound like a weird comparison but like for example when you have a captain on your team yeah. it's like yeah you know you're following them but in the same way they sort of have to show you that they're worthy of being a captain like sometimes on a team yeah someone will be awarded that captain title for whatever reason mm-hmm. but yeah. they are not the leader on that team but the leader on that team is someone who yeah. is able to gather everybody or whoever is involved in that team and point them in the same direction and it's not just his own direction Mm -hmm. it's that both of their interests because obviously like we said earlier a leader pretty much puts everyone else Mm -hmm. before them but the goal is still what Mm -hmm. they both want you know what i mean it's not like it's in everybody's both interests so then if we're taking that now to a relationship point of view Mm -hmm. what i imagine Mm -hmm. it would look like is that the the man is obviously showing the women why they like you know this is what we need to commit to and this is the goal and this is how we're going to get there and this is what we're going to do and we're going to act this way and do this and blah 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 it's not you're i'm the captain i'm the captain of the ship now you know i mean it's not it's not like that like hey that's the problem that's what happens yeah Yeah. when they get into that mode you even see in sports when they get in that mode like yo i'm the leader like you that dictatorship that's when it departs yeah that's when everything departs because you're Mm. not on the same you don't see me on the same level as you. Yeah. 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 That's interesting. But yeah, that's uh, all that's I wanted to ask today. Um, oh, for real? Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's yeah. it for me. Was there anything else you wanted to uh, bring up? Um, I'm thinking, I'm thinking if there's anything else I wanted to add. Um, 
I'd say uh, the last thing I'd say is mm. learn people's love languages. Okay. I don't know. I can't remember all of the love languages, but mine is quality time. So yeah. um, some people like, I think the other one is words of affirmation. Yeah, so there's quality learn time. Learn what people, yeah. Yeah, there's quality time, um, just acts of service, words of affirmation, mm-hmm. um, physical touch, mm-hmm. and... I think that's it. Oh, there's five. Okay. There's maybe. five. I thought there was four. Gifts. Gifts. Receiving gifts. Gifts. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I'd like say... That. Um, you have to learn what people you have to learn what people um, what their love languages are and tap into that mm. and another thing is that it's crazy because like I heard that or somebody said that usually a person's love language is what they didn't have growing up and mm. I was like I mean <laughs> I had a family and everything but then it, when I kind of like unpacked it I was like I was always at basketball you see what I'm mm. saying like so it's not that I wasn't love, but I didn't I didn't make the environment for me to for me to have that kind of, you know. Yeah. That kind and of it's like not like it was on purpose. It was just something yeah. that just happened because you're you're focused on other stuff. Yeah. And so because of that, mm. I like because all of that was going on, the one thing I wanted after all of that was just to have some quality time. Mm. You know, because I felt like all the time that I could spend chilling. You know, just having vibes. I spent on a basketball court. Mm. I spent working on it on my degree and stuff. So I say mm. tapping into what that person likes. And if you, if if what they like, you don't like giving it. There's gonna be friction. There's yeah. gonna be a lot of friction. I think that's the that's that's that for me is is the biggest problem. People don't want to give people what they need. Mm. But I think that people, the thing with like love languages as well, because I've looked into it a little bit in it. Um, it's like. So what you when you do like these these tests and what they say that's what you need but it's not necessarily what you're good at giving I think I'm not 100 percent sure but do you know what I mean like some people um, like for example I get told like I'm good with words and like oh like you know I'm good for someone that um, whose love language is words, words of affirmation language. but to mm-hmm. me if you're saying words to me they don't mean anything because the way I see it is like it could just be empty promises words don't really mean anything let me see your actions or do you know what I mean or for me even love language quality time or physical touch do you know what I mean for me that's just what means most to me in it and it's like but given it it's like it's, it's like I said it's completely different so I think the miscommunication or the the gap in like this love language things people aren't aware of which is where self-awareness comes into of what they're good at giving mm. like some people mm. if someone else's love language is physical if um receiving gifts and you can't like give them gifts even if it's just sentimental gifts mm. because you're you i don't want to say you're not thoughtful but like you just you're not good at thinking up of things then it's not going to work and it's not like you don't love them or you don't care for them but there's just mm. a miscommunication and it's not working do you know what i mean um yeah. but i think that's that wow yeah now self-awareness definitely plays a good play because if you don't know what your love languages are once again you could be feeling unloved and not even like know why and then things aren't really going to work out and you're going to be confused but that's not in a way your fault but it kind of is your fault because you you don't even know what you actually want mm-hmm. and why things aren't yeah you know what i mean i don't know to how you want it to so yeah i say also another thing is that you have to be you almost have to be confrontational a bit sometimes you have to make the other person know what it is that you want because sometimes a lot of the time like when we're like, like kind of relationships we're too scared like to mess things up like like i said in one of my last podcasts it's like the dating scene is a mess you know mm. what i'm saying like it's just a bunch of people situationships and stuff like that if you get out it's almost like you pulled everyone off you and you just, yeah. you just managed to get into like everybody's just kind of like in this limbo field like so many people are seeing knows who to trust mm. so it's like when you are in a relationship you often get that kind of anxiety to be like should i really say how i feel because if i say mm. how i feel and then it robs them the wrong way and then we end up breaking up i have to go back to that to that dating scene yeah. that's 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 more than mm. an, an incentive for me to just keep quiet <laughs> but then on the other flip side is that mm. if you end up keeping quiet it's just like uh maybe like a pressure tank and the pressure is mm. going to get so much and it's just going to 
It's just like if somebody's pissing you off or something like that, yeah. one day they're just gonna say something to you and you're just gonna blow. So it's yeah, like, you're just gonna explore that then. Yeah. Yeah. So it's just, I guess it's something you can learn outside of a relationship, but you have to learn how to speak your mind. And you know, mm. don't be if you create an environment where you speak your mind, when you speak your mind, it's not a problem. But if you don't create a, an environment where you speak your mind, then when you do speak your mind, you feel uncomfortable and that person also feels uncomfortable because they're not used to you doing this. So it's like, just start it from the beginning. So it's not harder in the long run. Is that when people do like B-Tech or start, start the homework that they needed for class, needed to do for one month in the last week, mm-hmm. like you're stressing because you, yeah. didn't, you didn't, you didn't allocate the time right. You know yeah. what I'm saying? And I think women struggle with this the most because I say this almost like it's easy, isn't it? But mm. if men could just be more humble sometimes and just okay. take advice, yeah, mm. it would be it make things so much more easier because a lot of women do want to say this, but then they're just like, uh, if I say this to him, he's just going to... Not going to take it say, well. Rah, but that means they're not a good leader, though. That means they're not... But then they won't even... Assist- yeah, exactly. <laughs> but they don't even want... If you say that to them, they'll be like, yeah. how, 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 how? Yeah, the ego how? comes out. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> exactly so you can't even begin to help them mm. so it's like you almost have to go to somebody that is almost a good mentor or somebody that they respect and when they hear like people hear the same thing but in this world we can't just take the truth that's what we that's what i feel like we need to learn how to do like it doesn't matter who is coming from just take the truth out of mm. it but what we tend to do is a bad like i learned about in philosophy and it's kind of one of the topics that they talk about when people are like going to law school or going to do stuff of that nature is that you need to know how to separate the, like what is being said from the person. So mm. if what's being said is the truth, take it, mm. but dis- detract that person from it because yeah. you're using the person as a way to not listen to them. And yeah. it's like, and I'm sure you've heard of Kem- Kevin Samuels, Kevin Samuels, I believe. He does like relationship advice, tells possibly, me yeah, that possibly. like you need if you want a high value man, you have all that stuff. Mm. And women, some, some women, like some of the stuff he says is off the wall, but yeah. in in that there is a lot of truth in it too. Mm. And it's like a lot of the time, women try to find things bad about him <laughs> to derail his point, yeah. but that doesn't derail his point. His point <laughs> is still true. You just yeah, trying to find yeah. a way to detract is this is and that's what people do it's a bad it's a bad mm. thing that we do it's like we might say you know this person is like this so to, that's why yeah, we can't invalidate to. someone's character to invalidate yeah. what they will say what they were saying yeah, which thing. doesn't necessarily hold correlate any weight but yeah. yeah that's what i'm saying so it's like that's that in a relationship now if a girl wants to be like to a guy you're not a leader a guy will now be like yeah well you, you, you're not submissive like when i do try to lead you know you do mm. you, you feel what i'm saying like you, they try to spin it like just take it for what it is yeah and just be like yo i might really like this anytime anybody said i might really like this you go back and reflect and then i think another thing guys need to learn how to do is just say sorry mm. like sometimes when you do something wrong just apologize just apologize it's hard but <laughs> it's worth it it's, it's not hard if you drop the ego though like because really like you are actually just saying sorry and like cool from, from when you say that you can't keep on doing the thing again but like you are actually just saying sorry do you know what i mean mm, mm, mm. Like, and it's yeah. so powerful man yeah no, these women be these women be like you say sorry to the, to a woman the right way they're gonna start biting their lips and that just say, <laughs> oh, like, you're, like, you're let's keep it pg like, oh <laughs> um, yeah i take it like because yeah, <laughs> no, I'm just being real, you know. Nah, like, nah, 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 nah. Sometimes you know, it's all good. It's all good. I'm joking. It's good. Okay. Oh, okay, cool. Like I, I tend to see that, like when women, I don't want to say women as a whole, but there's a trend that, mm-hmm. like, when women have, like, when women get into disagreements with other women, there's usually like more communication. Mm. After both parties have said what they don't like, they're able to kind of bring the problem to an end, close it. Mm. Now become friends again. It might take time, but the conversation, that conversation needs to be had. Mm. Whereas guys, there's no conversation that needs to be had. You just say, sorry, all right, cool. But then they're still harboring anger or yeah, stuff like that. So I think that's what make, might cause, yeah, that's what yeah. might cause the problem. Because I think maybe women like to talk it out. 
Yeah, and, and get it out there and it. then so they can just let go and get over it. Yeah, but then sometimes guys, when they hear women coming at them full energy, it's mm-hmm. like, let me just stone one. Let me just like, no, I'm not about to head out like. Yeah, know. let me just back off. Ho- like, hopefully, she kind calms of down, and then maybe I'll I'll like investigate and dive back in, but maybe not. And then that's when more long term problems come yeah. because you've been avoiding issues, and then when you just keep avoiding, avoiding, avoiding mm-hmm. issues eventually shit's gonna hit the fan and then it's just like wow where did all this stuff come from but it's just because of all yeah. that avoiding mm. but yeah there was a couple there was yeah. something i was gonna ask you um but this is what you said a minute ago um you said in the dating scene everybody's just like in like a limbo and just it's a zombie and or whatever like why mm. do you think that is <laughs> it's because when i was like like I just think to myself, like, when I was in the dating scene, yeah, mm. I didn't ask any of my boys. They were like to me, Joe, you're not going to get married. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and I said, I don't care. Mm. I don't care. Like, it's calm. It's calm. And it's like, I'm not saying every guy in the dating scene is like me, mm. but when you have guys that that are, have got, a lot of guys have got their heart broken and then they're in the scene and they're like, you know what, I'm not going to get hurt and you can't commit. Mm. It's like you're passing that same energy onto other women. Mm. And so eventually there's going to be women out there that are like, you know what, these guys ain't shit. So then they're going to pass that same pain that you have Mm. onto another guy, which is how I got in the first place. You know what I'm Mm. saying? And so the cycle continues. And so it's like, it's it's, it's a pandemic. It's a a legit (laughs) pandemic. Like, yeah. And it's the pandemic of heartbreak. You know what I'm saying? It's like mm. one person is passing it to another person, to another. And that's why I say it's never going to end. It's never mm. going to end. Yeah. If we all sit down and heal at the same time, mm. everybody at once, maybe we could all get into like relationship straight away. The, the, but the, the problem is there's no happen. social distancing. <laughs> no social <laughs> distancing. None. None. No social healing. No social no healing. No social healing. <laughs> No, no social that's healing. true. It's yeah. actually true. Yeah. Like that is the reason why most people end up hurting people is because they're hurting themselves. Yeah. So then they end up hurting somebody, even if they don't think they're hurting. But the way that they're acting, which is what I was saying earlier about self awareness, the way that they're acting is coming from a place of hurt, a place of trauma, mm-hmm. and then they end up hurting the next person. So now they're now it's like zombies or like bo- bo- whatever you want to call it. Now they're infected. They're you know acting from a place of trauma that you've put on them place of hurt that you put on them and then they're gonna go do that to someone else and it's just just cycling out here literally it's a pandemic (laughs) yeah it's a legit pandemic that's what i'm saying so Mm. then to be in a relationship and then go back to that you 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 do anything to make that relationship work Mm. some guys don't care because it's it's a patriarchal society so if a guy goes back into that scene it's not a big deal like it's just like I'm just gonna go back to what I was doing before, enjoying, you know, different, yeah. people, like, just different variety of women. It is what Whereas it is. women, they're more like, I'm trying to find, I'm trying to find the one. So to go back into that, trying to find the one, knowing that there's guys in that scene that are just having a good time. Yeah. It's peak. Mm. It's peak. It's so peak. And so now I guess they're trying to change the narrative and telling women that sh- they should, you know, date multiple guys at once, which I think they should to an extent, but mm. it's like. I don't know. Don't I don't know. do it from a place of you shouldn't anyone shouldn't be dating from a place of hurt and it like that's what I think. Then it's calm, but on the flip side of that, yeah. if you are in a place of hurt and you're dating all these people, and the same goes for men as well, because mm-hmm. that's the way I see it, it goes both ways. You know, you're dating multiple people, don't be doing it from a place of hurt, just be doing it because that's what is sort of best and you're doing it responsibly as well. So as long as you're not hurting people, then you're good in it. But when it starts getting into those sticky situations mm. and situations which is bound to happen which is why people don't advise it then it's that's you in it good luck well safe yeah. <laughs> people need an outlet that's the thing mm. do, do you agree that like every action has an equal and opposite re- reaction yeah um i haven't thought about that much but generally speaking i do agree with that statement yeah, yeah. So I feel like when somebody gets into like has a heartbreak, they need they need a way to outlet it. Mm. Now, where I agree with you is that they need to find a good place to outlet it in. So, like for instance, let's say 
you know, somebody grew up with like domestic violence in their house or stuff of yeah. that nature, turning towards sports, you know, to mm. kind of use that as your outlet. That's really good. That's a yeah. really good way to kind of use that, use that thing as an outlet. But I will say, even the people that do do that, they need to go and get healing themselves. Like they need to go yeah. and check up on themselves because once, once that sport goes, mm. reality is going to kick back in, you know? Yeah. That's and why I say even, like, if you get rich, even if you get rich say, and you even have if, money. Even if you're using it as an outlet, you still need to deal with those emotions and the baggage from that. And I think that's where yes. there's a, a miscommunication or something I'm going to call it because like you eventually it's going to add up with other stuff and it's going to cause you to act a certain type of way and mm. you won't even like realize that even though you've had your outlet and you're like wait but like you know I was doing all of this and I, I should be over it by now because you've chosen something healthy to release that that you know that feeling and just put your mind to like a meditation cleared your head of it but you haven't actually dealt with the issue mentally and emotionally yet so eventually it's going to catch up with you um and that's something i've sort of experienced myself recently so that's why i know it, it happens do you know what i mean and it will happen years later and you don't even realize and then it happen and be like damn i thought right, cool. I, was- I got one question mm. before we go <clears throat> why you never been in a relationship man? <laughs> <laughs> hey. I Yo, like, that, I never been in a relationship in your that. life. <laughs> cool. <laughs> so when I was obviously, I, cool. Let's start from like year. Let's start from year nine, in it. Year nine, my mindset was just obviously yeah. year nine. You know, it's not that deep, but like something happened, that happened. So anybody I was feeling yeah. at the time wasn't feeling me. In it. Yeah. I'm, I'm gonna be serious. Um, yeah. And oh, there was a couple of people that yeah. were feeling me, but I wasn't feeling them. So that's one reason that's that's been happening since. Yeah, yeah. But then come like year ten, yeah. from year ten to six, end of sixth form, I started taking basketball more seriously, in it. So I'm yeah, playing yeah, basketball yeah. like three, four times a week, including weekends yeah. now. So that's literally my whole day. Sometimes like I'll finish school, go basketball. I'm coming back at like nine o'clock, ten o'clock. I'm not gonna have time to talk mm-hmm. to people. Therefore, no time mm-hmm. to see nobody. Um, mm-hmm. weekends even in basketball games etc cetera, etc cetera. so my head is literally basketball even in sixth form um, I'm going academy now because I went to Barking Abbey in it so mm-hmm. I'm at academy now I'm living there like five days a week I'm waking up at 6 30 a.m I'm there mm-hmm. at school from 7 a.m till let's just say um, 4 30 6 8 6 p.m mm-hmm. and then I gotta mm-hmm. cook for myself and all that I ain't got time okay. to speak for no one. I'm trying to go. I'm trying to go college and mistakes and do you know what I mean. And I've actually had people mm-hmm. tell me they were. I literally remember I saw screenshots on my phone. You know when you take screenshots of conversations. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. <laughs> I've saw screenshots every day. I do like, oh, like you know, you ain't got no time for me. Why don't you like blah blah blah? I'm like, yo, I'm trying to, I'm trying to play basketball. Like, what are you talking about, idiot? Um, it's tough though. It's tough. Yeah, I'm actually I, gonna I, I, like. I'm actually gonna do. I actually thought about it. I'm gonna do a um. I'm going to do a podcast on dating an athlete. Mm. And I'm a, I'm, I want to have like an experienced guy come on and like give like, you know, like what it's like dating an athlete. Cause women, <laughs> women, women, women get into this cause that, like, you know, they think the guy's attractive, mm. but then when the guy can't answer your text on time and that yeah. it's peak, not everybody's prepared for saying. that. They want, they want the aesthetic, but they don't want the lifestyle. That's the mm, that, mm, that's the mm, problem, mm. isn't it? Right. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, now when I got to uni, so, um, and I've just came out of uni, it's more like once again, anyone I'm feeling, they're just mm-hmm. it, it just wasn't working like that. But then also, I'm not gonna lie, I was just enjoying. I'm just enjoying uni. Like, I'm like, this is uni, yeah, and that's yeah. another thing as well. When I was younger, I was like, yeah. we, I'm young. This isn't gonna last anyway. Yeah. Like. So what's the uh-huh. point? That's the way I actually saw it. And I'm thinking long term. It's for the vibes. Hmm? It's for the vibes. Oh, what are you saying? It's, it's, it's work experience. <laughs> That's what you're saying. Huh? Don't call it vibes. Just call it work experience. <laughs> yeah, because I'm, I'm asking myself, like, I, mm. I, yeah. Like, I, I say to myself, like, like, there's women, yeah, that, like, were told, work hard, focus on your goals and all of that stuff, yeah? Mm. And they did that. And then now that they've got all of this success and that, 
they haven't, you know, they haven't spent the time to kind of like build up their kind of their mm. their relationship personality, that like what they want to do. As well. That can definitely happen. To yeah, happen to man as definitely. well. Yeah, you know, yeah, I've, yeah. I've, I've met man, man that are cold at basketball, mm. man that like no game, no game. Mm. I'm like yo, no <laughs> game, and they like they just like, but I don't know what to say to a man. I'm like yo, like you have to, it's is you have to make time for it like you legit mm. have to make time. it's a skill you have to kind of learn i mean <laughs> sometimes you can get like you can get lucky the lucky the lucky guy that just fills you by accident mm. but it's something you have to kind of like work on i think it's just you gotta make time for it. it's just as important as i think mm. get just as important as your career mm. if if i'm if i'm being honest because if 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 if, if successful and love are some of the highest aspirations in life mm. you have to prepare for it in a way like it's, it's mm. really important so i was one of the guys that used to say you know what I can't chat to no girls you know just gonna focus on my basketball mm, do, mm, do, mm, but it's productive it. i still make time that, for it somehow that meat meal oh you know yeah you can make you can you could get women chasing money but you can't get money chasing women blah 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 like that that mindset of yeah i'm just gonna put my, my head down focus on myself do me blah 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 and i get it in a way and in a way it's good do you know what i mean because you shouldn't just be focused on girl some both. people are and then you see how that stops them from reaching their goals on the other side do you know what i mean but like mm. we've been saying it is about yes, having that balance and being balance. able to balance the two um but that's easier said than done for sure mm, yeah, man, that's all I said. I think this is a good conversation. Yeah, I actually definitely. had my notes on the yeah. side. I had my notes on the side. I actually, there's if if we're talking about self awareness, um, I was speaking to this guy yesterday, and I was like, he was kind of talking about his strongest skill is that he can improvise. Mm. So when he prepares too much, yeah, and like if he tries the whole preparation thing, he doesn't do that. He just mm. look for his thoughts in his mind and just say something, and it always hits. Yeah. <laughs> And like yeah. when I used to talk to girls and like like shoot shoot my shot at girls, mm. that's the approach I took. I never prepared. I just like, oh, what's up, man? How you doing? You know what I'm saying? Like, you look nice today, you know. You probably wore the outfit for me. She'd be like, excuse me, but I'd have mumbled it. I'd be like, no, I didn't say nothing. <laughs> so she goes, Oh, what do you say? And I'm like, all right, cool, you know, now I can start gisting. <laughs> but then in life, like when I do podcasts or when I do like just things like I like to have too much control. Like, I like mm. to feel like I know what's going on, what the outcomes are. It's and a balance, like, bro. Yeah, you need to just chill. So I decided, mm. I said, you know what? When I do this one today, I'm going to try and um, not overly prepare. Mm. And so then I have my notes. But then as I did, I just decided not to look at it that much. I just said, yeah. you know what? I might actually try what this guy said to me yesterday. Because that's mm. one of my things. It's like, I need, I, I almost need to... I've always been somebody who's a hard worker. So then it, it ends up being the case that I kind of have to um, be prepared. Mm, you feel like, oh, you need, you need to perform in it. You need to make sure you meet that expectation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That high level, keep meeting yeah. that high level. So you're like, cool, yeah. in order to do so that, I mean, I it makes sense to prepare. And... Yeah, but then I don't train that in, like that spontaneous muscle. Yeah. So the reason why I fear is because I don't work on it. Mm. So like you said, it's the balance. It's yeah, balance for sure. I'm gonna make a tweet about that still. <laughs> cool. I'm gonna wrap this up. Uh, it's been nice speaking to you, bro. I'm gonna definitely, obviously, yeah, yeah, yeah. everything yeah. down below. Do you wanna just shout out the name and everything Same. once again? Oh, yeah, yeah. Mid range gist. It's, it's a good podcast. If you any of you guys have any relationship advice, stuff they want to talk about, I have, a, I have a few guests that, that I have coming on in the next couple of weeks, but. If you want to come on, just let me know. I'll add you to the list and then you can come, you know, chime in, tell your story, come give a different angle, you know what I'm saying? Help people out, you know. There's a lot of single people out here and they need skills and they need tips, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? So, yeah, right. that's yeah, me. No, Follow that's me mid Yeah, show. Yeah. That's good, bro. All right, All right. Well, I'm going to get back to you later. Appreciate it, man. Yeah, that's it, man. Peace. All right, see you